Welcome back. I'm Sabine Borse. I'm a product manager on the Chrome team working on authentication. As you heard earlier today in Darren's keynote, the purpose of progressive web apps is to improve user flows, to reduce friction, and to create really engaging experiences. And we've already given you tools to solve issues around reliability or to create app-like experiences by adding PWS to the home screen. And now we want to focus on two missing flows, sign-in and payments. AG and I are going to start off and spend the next half hour by talking to you about how Chrome is helping to remove friction from your sign-in flows by making signing in easier in a simple and secure way. But the first of step, of course, is getting users signed up. And we all know entering all your information in long registration forms can be super frustrating. Like, this is how it looks like each time when I enter my credentials on my phone. And the stats also confirm this. About half of users would rather abandon a service than go through another registration form. So we have a huge opportunity here to reduce friction in your sign-up flow and then really drive growth and conversions. And let Chrome help you do this. Chrome offers autofill functionality that makes it easier for users to fill out these forms faster and easier. But sometimes things are ambiguous, like here. It's unclear which of these fields represents the username, the identifier. Is it the username or is it the email address? It's unclear to the user. It's unclear to the browser for sure. But the best thing to do with ambiguity is to be explicit. And an easy way to be explicit here is just to mark up your forms with autocomplete attributes, and then you can make sure that your forms work perfectly with password autofill. And I promise you, it will only take you a few minutes. So now that we got your users signed up, the question is how to keep them signed in. Maybe like this? Probably not, because there are all these buttons on the top. You have to remember which of them you used last time, or if you used the username and password, and then you have to remember which password you used. So as you see, a lot of things to remember. And let me now ask you a quick question here. How many people in this room have run into the experience that they create an account for a site and bam, get this message that the account already exists. Yeah, quite a few. <laughs> so as you can see, it's full of friction and there are so many drop-off points along the way. And also the stats again show this here. According to a study, 92% of users would rather leave a site than reset their login information if they forgot their passwords. That's 92% of people leaving. Just think about that. And how much is a signed-in user worth to your business? So again, really huge opportunity to get all those users that are abandoning your sign-in screens today to be signed in and become really engaged users if we just made things a bit easier. For instance, like this. So when a user returns to your site, it would be dramatically better if they could just skip the sign-in form and go straight to an engaging, personalized experience. And that means knowing who they are. But the question is, why is that so hard? It's because sign-in flows today are limited in ways that the browser is not. So leveraging the position of the browser here is really the key, because if a user is seemingly new to you, they are not new to the browser. And, and that's what we are focused on, making signing in easier in a secure way uh, through the browser. And we do that with an API that we will be talking about today, the Credential Management API. But before we dive right into that, um, let's assume for a moment that you have a really dedicated user and they found their way, their way through all these possibilities and successfully signed into your site. So are we done now? Nope, not quite yet because users typically don't stay signed in for forever, unlike on native apps. So there is a unique challenge that we are facing here on the web, which are the different attack surfaces and threat models. Just think about cross-site scripting, CSRF, or uh, click checking. So session management on the web is really hard. And as a result of that, there are very different requirements for session management on the web and on native. And one, one interesting thing we can do with service workers is using two, co uh, two tokens, a uh, short-lived and a long-lived token, where we use the service worker to refresh the short-lived token. 
And if you're interested in learning more about this idea, then just check out that blog post that's linked from here. So as you can see, there are some avenues like this to explore for the long term. But an easy way to handle this is using the Credential Management API. It basically moves users from a state in which they are frequently automatically signed out into a state which they can be automatically signed back in. So sounds good. Uh, it's, a, it's a web platform API, standards-based, and it allows the browser to facilitate the sign-in process with information it has stored from the user. And it does that in a frictionless fashion and also works across devices. We shipped this API earlier this year in Chrome 51, and we announced it at Google I.O. And since launch, we have seen a bunch of developers shipping it, like you can see here. And we want to start off now by looking at two common problems that we are trying to solve with this API. So on some sites, like e-commerce, travel, or news sites, sign-in is often not required. It's really, uh, it's really helpful, but it's not necessary. So on those sites, the Credential Management API can automatically sign the user in right on the home page. And that's basically what you see here indicated with that sm small blue button on the bottom of the screen, the toast. <laughs> um, and, and the user is being auto-signed in here right on the home page. Um, and as mentioned earlier, we know that on, on the web, sessions often expire very frequently, sometimes within a day, sometimes even within an hour, 10 minutes. So that means on those sites, basically every time a user returns to the site, they are in a signed out state. And then it requires quite some dedication from the user to find a user menu, click through a sign in uh, button, and then be signed back in. We know that most services can provide usually better, um, better experiences to users if they are signed in, but that's not always immediately clear to the user. So they might not see the value proposition of signing in right away. Therefore, it's dramatically better if, if you can just automatically sign them in right on your homepage, like I mentioned, by basically on any leaf page that the user might land on through a search. And AliExpress, for example, an e-commerce site, they have seen an 11% increase in conversion rates. That means users who actually made a transaction. And that's for users who signed in through the API in comparison with users who didn't sign in through the API. And I've also seen some really, really good UX improvements, like an 85% drop in sign-in failure rate on the web or a 60% decrease in time spent signing in. Now, The Guardian has seen a 44% increase in users signed in on two or more devices across Chrome and their Android native app. And another common problem that we are trying to solve with this API is that password managers today are not really equipped well to remember your federated sign-ins. That means when you sign in for, with Facebook or with Google. And that means those users often create duplicate accounts, as you know, because they just forgot that they already had an account. And the Credential Management API can also help here, because it can remember for the user that they signed in with such a federated account. Pinterest is a website that offers federated sign-in options too. And they have seen a 10% increase in desktop web logins for eligible users after they ship the Credential Management API. And they have also seen a 3% increase in user engagement. Now, even if users switch between devices, which is pretty common today, and let's say they download the native app for your service. They can seamlessly continue that signed-in experience. Just, they need to just be signed in with the same Google account. And we call this password sync feature in Chrome, Smart Lock for Passwords. And if you want to enable this cross-platform experience for your users, you can do the mapping between your website and your native app. And then you can also use the Smart Lock for Passwords APIs for your Android native app. And with that, let me hand over to AG, who is now going to show you the Credential Management API in practice. Thanks, Sabine. Uh, my name is AG. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is a Credential Management API in a demo uh, with a website called Polymer Shop, which we introduced at Google I.O. this year. Let me get it.
So this is a uh, Polymer Shop website. Imagine that I have just finished shopping experience through a guest checkout uh, experience. And I'm about to create an account. So first thing I should do is to enter my email address. So tap on it. And now I see my email address pop up. The nice thing about uh, using this browser is uh, autocomplete feature suggests me to uh, use one of uh, my email address that I have put into uh, this browser in the past. So I can just tap to enter my email address and enter a random password and sign up. And now you see a, a pop-up at the bottom of the page asking me if I want to store the credential information. It's nice. So I can just save. So now my uh, browser remembers my ID and password for me. So what I'm going to show you now is a auth sign in in action. But in order to make this demo exciting, what I'm going to do is to swap this device with a new one. Let's see what happens. So as soon as I tap on this icon, I'll be auto signed in to the same website. OK? One, two, three. <laughs> Boom, I'm signed in. So what happened here is that the credential information I have stored to the browser, uh, to the other device, was synchronized across my Google account and propagated to this device. And as soon as I landed on the same website, the Credential Management API picked up the credential uh, information and let me authenticate and me, uh, let me sign in. But sometimes you might want to uh, keep uh, signed out. In that case, you can simply sign out. That way, you won't be signed out uh, for the future. So this is truly a frictionless signing experience. But if I talk about signing experience, uh, frictionless signing experience, you might imagine about uh, federated logins. Federated logins are, uh, as Sabine mentioned, like Google sign-in or login, uh, Facebook login, or some other options we have, like Microsoft, Yahoo, Twitter, GitHub, etc. Luckily, we have a Google sign-in option right here. So let me try sign-in. So I sign in uh, with a single tap. What is new here is that if you look at the bottom of the page, I see a similar uh, pop-up show up. So I can store my identity information to the browser, like Sabin mentioned. So I can store federated login information to the browser. So, so far, I have two accounts stored to this browser. Then what happens if I try to sign in? Let me sign up again and try to sign in by pressing the button. And now, what you see is a dialog asking me uh, to sign in with a, one of two accounts. So I can simply tap, of one, of the, uh, tap one of them to get signed in. So this, uh, you might notice that I didn't type a single letter using a software keyboard. This is really frictionless signing experience. So let's get back to the slide. So the uh, benefit of uh, Credential Management API, let me recap. The first thing is it enables auth signing feature across devices. And it also virtually enables a permanent session. And it remembers uh, federated accounts for me. And I could use account chooser to skip forms without typing a single letter using software keyboard. So I should say Credential Management API eliminated a whole bunch of uh, frictions from the signing experience. Right? So how can you, as a developer, bring the similar experience to your own website? So I'm going to uh, dive into that. The first thing you should do is to save credential information to the browser. The forms such as sign up, sign in, or change password 
is a great chance for a user to store their credential information to the browser. So there are a few steps. First, interrupt the form submission. Then send the request to, to the server using AJAX. Then store the credential information, and finally update the uh, UI using a profile. Before moving forward, just make sure that your form is annotated well using the autocomplete attribute that uh, Sabi mentioned earlier. With that, uh, when the user submits a form, prevent default, interrupt it, and prevent default, and uh, prevent it to uh, proceed to the next page. Why is that? If the page transition happens, this will move to the next page, which means that credential information user has put into the previous page will be lost in the next page. By making the uh, authentication uh, call using AJAX, you can retain the credential information in the same page uh, while verifying the authentication uh, uh, credential. Make sure to uh, create an API on the server side which respond with HTTP code with 200 or 401 so that it can uh, respond with a, uh, correct, correctly to tell the browser that authentication was successful or not. Responding with uh, profile information would be uh, ideal. So after the authentication, you, are, you can store the credential now. Before doing so, make sure that API is available. Always keep in mind about the progressive enhancement. To store the credential information, instantiate password credentials object with the form element that you have created uh, as an argument. Then call navigator.credentials.store. If the API is not available, you can just skip this step and uh, uh, forward the profile information to the next step. Once everything goes well, you can update the UI or proceed to the personalized page, and you're done. Then uh, in cases where you your website has a federated logins, um, here, here's what you should do. So federated logins are, as Sabi mentioned, uh, a concept of signing into a website using a third-party identity, such as Google, uh, Facebook, Microsoft, et cetera. So federated logins are uh, based on a standard protocol such as OpenID Connect or OAuth. There are two benefits of using it. One is that users doesn't have to remember extra password to sign into your, web, your website. And second is that, uh, in general, users can uh, sign into your website just by one tap. There are a few steps. First, authenticate the user with the identity provider, then store the credential information, and update the UI. So obviously, by tapping on the button, uh, kickstart the authentication flow. Um, so in order to authenticate the user using identity provider, uh, we should, you should use kind of libraries uh, provided by many different identity providers. For Google, we provide Google sign in. Facebook uh, provide Facebook login. Uh, let me skip this step, because it's quite complex. and. Uh, just assume that you get authenticated and got the profile information. So once the user is authenticated, create an uh, instantiate object called federated credential. But in this case, you're not storing ID and password. Instead, you're storing uh, identity of the uh, user signed into the identity provider, and also a string that represents the identity provider itself. Name and icon URL are options. Then call navigator.credentials.store. The uh, rest of the steps are similar to what I have mentioned in previous section, so let me skip that. And the most exciting part of using Credential Management API is auth signing. Auth signing can happen anywhere on your website as long as the, uh, you think it is appropriate. For example, uh, top page is, of course, a good place to. Uh, use auto sign in. But some leaf pages, such as news articles or item pages in the uh, e-commerce website, is also a good uh, place to enable auto sign ins To do so, you get, first you get a credential information, then authenticate the user, and finally update the UI. 
uh, before getting a credential, make sure that the user is not already signed in. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense, right? So in order to get a credential, call navigator.credentials.get. By giving it a password and federated as uh, option, uh, as parameters, you can get specify the type of the credential information you want to get. And by giving it a mediated true, this will tell the browser that this is an auto signing call. So it won't show any UI for uh, asking user to choose from. And it will return undefined if the user has no uh, credential information, or there are multiple credentials stored, or the user is signed out. Uh, after the function is resolved, you will get, receive a credential object. But if that is undefined, which means that auto sign in didn't happen. So you can just dismiss the whole process and uh, pretend like as if nothing happened. And if you did get a credential object, just examine the type and run the authentication flow depending on the type of the credential. So the authentication flow is similar with what I have described in previous sections. And finally, you can update the UI using a profile. One tip I should note here is that if you did get a credential but failed to authenticate, that is going to be a, a little bit trouble because the user sees the blue bar popping up saying that uh, the user is signing in. But if failed, if there are no uh, sign of the failure, user will be confused. So you should show an error message in this case. And when the user is signed out, you should disable uh, auto sign name. To do so, sign out user first then call navigator.credentials.require uh, user mediation. This will turn off auto sign in feature. And finally, when the user is uh, trying to sign in, you can show an account chooser so that user can select one of the accounts to uh, sign in with. This will also turn on uh, auto sign in feature back on. There are a few steps, again. So first, show the account chooser. And once the user selects one of the accounts, you will receive a credential information. Then you can authenticate the user and update the uh, UI, finally. So most of the cases, um, this is quite similar to what I have described for auth signing. So by user's explicit action, such as type, tapping on the sign-in button, will show an uh, let let the uh, account chooser to show up by calling navigator.credentials.get. But at this time, with a mediated false. This will show an account chooser when the user has multiple accounts stored or user is signed out. Uh, the rest of the steps are quite similar to uh, auth signing, like I said, but except one thing. If the user didn't choose any of the accounts uh, or dismiss the account chooser, that means that there is no account that the user intended to sign in with, which means that user wants to sign in with other account, right? So you should show sign in form so that user can enter their other credential information and let the user sign in and store another credential. OK, so I described a lot of complex stuff, but we have document uh, of this. So you can just follow g.co slash credential management API to learn more about this API. And we are working on a, a more in-detail document. So hopefully, it can be published today or tomorrow. I will uh, tweet about it using the hashtag, so please watch out. With that, uh, let me hand it back to Sabine. Thanks, AG. So we talked about session management and how to remove friction in your sign-in flows by using the Credential Management API that we shipped earlier this year. But there is one thing we haven't talked about yet today, and we'd love to hear your feedback on that. And that's the account verification step during sign-up. 
You know, when you sign up for an account, you typically have to, to verify that account by digging up an email, clicking on a verification link, or by copy-pasting an OTP, a one-time password, from an SMS back into the site. And what we've often heard from developers is that about 20 to 30% of their users drop off at this stage step, just because it's another thing that adds friction. And Android offers APIs to help with this for native apps. And those apps that are using these APIs have seen, um, oh, <laughs> forgot to <laughs> continue with the slides. Those have seen uh, higher conversion rates. So we are now exploring whether we can bring something similar to Chrome and, and, and the web. And again, we'd love to hear your feedback on this problem in general, either via the feedback form you can see here, or just come and see us in person. AG and I will be around. Looking forward to meeting you. Thanks. Thank you.